Welcome to the Elevate Everyday Podcast. I'm your host, Cade Junkerth, and I own Fitness Junkie Training, where we help busy professionals get in the best shape of their life while working smarter, not harder. And today I'm joined by an awesome guest. We got another coach on the podcast. We've got Amy Wilson on here, and she is not only just a nutrition coach, but a nutritionist, um, a geriatric pharmacist. Um, and also a nursing home consultant. And she's got an area of expertise that I feel like is trending right now um, with Ozempic. So that's something we're definitely going to talk about. Um, but first and foremost, Amy, I appreciate you being on the podcast. Thank you for coming on. And uh, first question I have for you is, you know, you've been a fit in, in the fitness industry since you were 17 years old. I thought I got started early when, when I got started in college as a fitness coach, but like what got you into the fitness or industry at such an early age? Um, and like, what, what made you so passionate about getting into this and helping others? Um, well, first of all, thanks for having me, Kate. This is, this is a great honor to be on this um, podcast because we're gonna have a great discussion. So it's, in high school, I was in sports, I danced, and it was, you know, I'm going to age myself, so I'm in my 50s, I'm in my midlife, uh, and aerobics was becoming really big. It was, it was, it was the boom of the aerobics craze. And it was kind of like a natural progression to start teaching aerobics, and then I started teaching at the University of Toledo, where I went to pharmacy school, and it was a great you know, side income. It was so much better than having a job at the library because that just sucked. I mean, I'll be honest, it just sucked. Yeah. So to have at that time, we were just getting into personal training and aerobics and it was becoming more of a, of a, let's say a, a, of a discipline or of a, you know, a job. And man, I was getting paid to work out at that yeah. time. That's, you know, that's how I thought about it because I'm like, wait, you know, I get to teach class, have fun yeah. and, and get paid for it. So it was kind of the natural progression of going from, going from sports, going from dance and then going into the fitness industry. For sure. Yeah. That, that's kind of how, you know, from sports, I feel like that's a, where a lot of coaches start out, you know, mm -hmm. they played sports and then maybe like for me, I'll, I'll speak for myself, but like I got more into like the working out for the sport than, than I was even into the sport at some point. So I, I don't know if you were the same way, but it was like, I kind of became more passionate about like improving for the sport rather than the sport itself <laughs> at a certain point. But well, we weren't there yet. So the conditioning has come a long way from where it, where it was back in the eighties okay. gotcha. for me. I mean, I'll be honest. It was, I was not going to gain the freshman 15. And that was, that was, that was my motivation at the time. And yeah, now we've come so far about how conditioning helps. If I had the conditioning that we have now, right. my volleyball skills would have been, oh my gosh, through the roof. <laughs> they really would have been. Um, Cause I, my vertical jump is much higher than it was when I was in high school, just wow. because of you know, back then all you're doing is, okay, you have cement wall and you're just jumping to hit this line. There's so much more that we know with plyometrics and everything else that we can do for that burst of energy, that, that muscle conditioning yeah. to be able to jump higher, last longer, all that good stuff. That's all. What is your vertical at now? Oh, I, you know, I don't know, but I, when I used to take <laughs> pictures, it's like, man, if I would have had this, maybe I would have had some, you know, scholarships for <laughs> volleyball because <laughs> I'm five, five. So okay. it was, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a tall volleyball. I was a setter. So that okay. was my, but still it's like, you know, I could have probably did some front row hitting. If yeah. Yeah, for sure. That's awesome though. I, I love that you do plyometrics and stuff because I feel like a lot of older individuals, they think, they just think, uh, I don't know. They, they just don't think about power. They don't think about strength and, and explosiveness and stuff like that. And it's such a, a crucial part of training, no matter what age you are, maybe even arguably more for older individuals. Um, so I would say more. I mean, it, well, honestly, it's like throughout life. Yes, absolutely. When you get older, plyometrics is so important. You need that sudden power of of muscle you well first of all you need that muscle period right. and plyometrics does help with that we also know plyometrics will help with uh bone density yeah. because of and you know so you know a lot of times it's hit training that we're doing plyometrics hit is good for at least for females it's good twice a week one for bone density one for cardiovascular and it's muscle building is so underrated when you get older and it's the 
probably the most important thing that needs to occur as you age is to continue not only preserving the muscle, but building the muscle. Oh, man. I, I, this is one of the biggest reasons why I wanted you on the podcast, because I feel like the things that I tell um, older individuals in general, but also older women, they're like, they don't want to hear it from me because I'm a young male. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, no, well, here you go, guys. Like you're hearing it from Amy, who's a professional. She helps uh, like she's literally a geriatric pharmacist. She helps mm -hmm. older individuals, you know, improve their health. And that's like one of the biggest things that I try to debunk is no, you need to work on building muscle, building power, um, especially as you age. So, um, so I think that's even more powerful coming from you. Cause I, I, I say it all the time, but people are like, well, but you're, you're a young man, easy for you to say, <laughs> right? Type of thing. So. Well, and the thing is, is that, yeah, we need to look back at saying, okay, you know, we look back at our 20 year old self and say, what, what would we have done differently? The thing is, and I would say, I would tell the 20 and 30 year olds this too. You need to look at your future self. What will you do now mm -hmm. that your future self in 20 years, 30 years is going to look back and going, you know what? Thank you yeah. that you have set me up for success, not failure. And we don't think in that. We think of the now, we think in the week, we think of how quickly can we lose weight? What can we do for the next event? And we're not looking at years down the road. Mm -hmm. What is that quick fix going to do to us years down the road? Is right. it going to help us or is it going to hurt us? And unfortunately, a lot of the things that we're doing hurts us, hurts us. It, it takes our muscle away. Yeah. And when you don't have muscle, your metabolism goes in the toilet. It really does. Yeah. You're able, you're what we call um, your activities of daily living. That's just walking. That's getting in the car and driving. That's walking, um, you know, parking your car and able to walk to the grocery store and carry all your bags out. You want to be able to do those when you're 20, 30, 40, 50 and beyond. And it's something that we don't think about until it's taken away. And you're, and then you got the, I wish if I could have, and right. I don't want anybody to have that. I wish, or I, I, I wish I did, or I could have. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. It's man. It, I just wish we could instill it. Like, yeah, I mean, it, it's going to be powerful coming from you. Uh, and so I hope the listeners are listening to this and guys, if you, if you're older, if you're younger, whatever, wherever you're at, like, don't just look at, like Amy said, like, I want to get to this goal, like as quickly as possible. I want to reach this outcome. Um, you know, look at the future, look at how you can set yourself up for long-term success and get, don't get discouraged if you get set up on a plan that is looking out for your long-term success and you're not getting the really quick results that you mm -hmm. expected. Um, Cause a lot of times, you know, if you're with a good coach, they're setting you up for, for like lifelong progress. Right. And the way Amy's explaining that's, that's the way to do it. So, um, so I think that's super powerful. Um, so we talked about kind of debunking that myth as far as training goes. Uh, what what would you say is like the biggest misconception when it comes to your nutrition, just in general? Calories in versus calories out. Okay, just drives me nuts. Mm -hmm. And the reason being, and hope I would like to say the younger generations don't believe that, but they do. Um, it's been instilled in us for so long that calories in equals calories out. And unfortunately, yes. Okay. A calorie is a calorie. It is a mark of, of how much it takes to, I think what raise a temperature of water by one degree. Is it Kelvin? I think that's how you measure calories, but calories, even though they are technically equal on an energy source calories and macronutrients, meaning your protein, your fat, your carbs are not equal when it comes to nutrition. So you could be doing, and I'm going to tell you, cause everybody does it 1200 calories for some reason. I don't know who, whoever said that it's stuck. And everybody thinks, especially females, Oh, I can only eat 1200 calories BS because it's not about the calories. It's about the quality of food that you're intaking. And it's about, I would say the percentages that you're also intaking. Cause someone could be, I get a lot of this, a lot of clients come to me and say, but I'm eating clean. I'm eating clean. I don't understand why I'm not getting results. I'm doing everything I'm supposed to. I'm not eating sugar and I'm eating clean. And I look and see what they're doing. And, you know, I had someone who went to my website and, and had a consultation with me and the same thing. And she was in her kitchen. I'm like, well, open up your pantry and show me what you're eating. 
it was all healthy quotation marks and quote, quote quotation marks processed food uh. processed junk and she wasn't keeping track of how much protein she was intaking. She wasn't keeping track of how much carbs she was using or how, how, how much fat she was intaking. As long as it said healthy or in the ingredients that said clean, she was eating that. Well, no wonder she wasn't getting results because she wasn't fueling her body with what was needed. And when we go with that calories in versus calories out, and females, we're horrible about this one because we're like, oh, I just went on the Stairmaster and I just did 600 calories. So now I can go have a cheeseburger <laughs> or I can go have a margarita because or whatever. And it doesn't work that way. One, machines lie. I'm going to tell you that right now. Machines lie. Do never go by what that thing says. They lie. Sure. And the other thing too, you're going to go to a class and I'll, and I get that because I still teach fitness classes. Well, how many calories do you think I burn? How many calories? It, we need to get out of that calorie mindset because it actually doesn't serve us. It actually, it actually puts us backwards and hinders us. If we think in, in terms of calories, we need to be looking at terms of quality and macronutrients, how much protein, fat, and carbohydrates, yeah. your, your quality being how much micronutrients fiber. And then when it comes to exercise, it's also quality, not how much you're doing and quality, meaning that Ladies, gentlemen, pick up those weights. Yes. Pick <laughs> up those weights. I love me some cardio. Believe me, I used to be a cardio junkie. Cardio is great for, for cardiovascular health. It's, it's great for your heart. It's great for your lungs. But when it comes to your body composition, if you are overworking out, you are actually, I'm going to say it, women, you're going to get bigger and you're not going to like it yeah. because- and especially if you're not fueling your body, your body is going to hold on to fat and it is not going to burn fat as much as you think it will, because your body needs amino acids. It needs sugar. It's going to get it from the available source and that's muscle mm. and muscle is expensive and we need to be saving that muscle and building that muscle and quit thinking that under eating, or if you're starving yourself, and it may not be starving yourself, it may be 1200 calories and you need a lot more and overworking out because you're doing three classes or you're going for a run or you're working out three or four hours a day, that's actually hurting you. And it's not setting you up for your future self. It's also for those of you who are in thirties, forties for females going through perimenopause and menopause, it's going to set you up for even more issues later down in life. For sure. Man, a lot to unpack right there, but yeah, <laughs> but yeah I, I agree that macros is a, is a better kind of way to approach nutrition than just calories in calories yeah. out. Because uh, like, if you just thought of it that simply, like if you were just like, well, it really doesn't matter what my macros are. If it's just calories and calories out, like you could be eating Twinkies and eating 1200 calories, but that you're going to feel and look terrible. <laughs> if mm -hmm. you eat that. So if you think of it in those extremes, um, like, yeah. And I, I'm going to shout out uh, Thomas DeLauer because I was just watching one of his videos recently. He, he says that that for skinny fat people, and those those are the type of people that I, I train kind of frequently, I feel like mm -hmm. I help those individuals because I, I was once I feel like my natural body type is like skinny fat. Um, which yeah. The definition of that is like, you're not overweight, like your BMI is normal. Um, yeah, but you're like an, a normal weight, obese person. So mm -hmm. it's like, you have a high body fat percentage, even though you're not technically overweight. Um, and where what really comes into play in getting to that point um, is the macros, because that that's going to have a big portion to do with your body composition, you're not just because yeah, calories in, calories out. That's going to determine weight gain, weight loss. But like thinking about what is your body made up of, like you said, fat or muscle, like your body composition. That's going to be determined by the macros. Um, mm -hmm. so if, if you're just eating a ton of fat, you're not hitting your protein goals, um, then, then you're just going to be, you know, a normal sized fat person <laughs> because, because you're, well, you're we forget or don't even think about, we are a complex machine, right? And we are one humongo big chemical reaction. And we don't think about that because our bodies are good at adapting. Our bodies are good at surviving. Yeah. And yeah, you can eat crap and you're still going to be fine. Um, and I get this all the time with keto. It's like, but your body, your, your, my body goes on ketones. Yeah, your body adapts. It, it, it's good at adapting. You forget that 
we are nothing but a bunch of chemical reactions. We need amino acids in order to build the build muscle. Yeah. We need certain micronutrients, B12, folic acid, in order for your methylation system to work. We need all these things that we have to get from, hey, real food. You know, our bodies are smart. They want they never they never wanted stuff made in a in a plant yeah. not a plant that you grow on, on on the ground a plant that has you know food that's manufactured it really wants real food and when you feed your body real food you get those chemical reactions okay so here's what happens oh my gosh I, i'm thinking clearer why am i thinking clearer well you're able to do you know you're able to think because those chemical reactions are occurring then uh, all your hormones all your neurotransmitters are able to work Jamie Oliver, who I absolutely love, who's a chef in Britain, has done studies on kids taking out the processed food and putting in real food and what that does with ADD, what it does with depression, and anxiety. He has shown that the behaviors in kids, which is like, you know, like the worst of the worst, you give them real food, their behaviors change. Well, just think about that as adults. Okay, we're we're stressed, we have anxiety, we have depression. You start adding real food, you're gonna help your depression, your anxiety. And we forget about that. We just think, oh, I'm hungry. Let me just grab something instead of figuring out how it's serving our body in the first place. Yeah. And I think the biggest thing with that, that could help people if they just make this mind sh mindset shift of thinking of, of food as fuel and understanding mm -hmm. what the different macros are used for, right? Like you, you talked about, um, with resistance training, I mean, you know, the, the best source of fuel for that. And, and you talked about like, you know, you can't really, um, be in keto all the time. I mean, your body can adapt, but you know, the main source of fuel for it, for lifting and stuff like that is actually carbohydrates. Carbs, yeah. Right. So, and then, you know, with cardio, knowing that you do need some fats because, um, that's the main source of fuel for cardiovascular health and everything and, and that type of exercise. Uh, and then, yeah, knowing that the protein is what actually helps you rebuild because you're really just breaking yourself down if you're not getting that macro in there. So I think when people understand that and they, they realize that you can either be fueling and recovering with the right nutrients, or you can be breaking yourself down and having no fuel <laughs> with the, the wrong type of nutrients, um, then, you know, hopefully that, that helps them make that shift in, in thinking about what they're taking in. So. And I'm sure you get the pushback because I get the pushback too. It's like, but that's so boring. I don't want to eat chicken <laughs> breasts and, and rice and broccoli all the time. Okay. Well, yeah, that's one meal, but I'll tell you, I eat pretty good and, yeah. and flavorful and we just forget what real food is. We just forget right. that, Hey, you know, there's spices. Not everything has to be loaded with gravy or sauces. When you start actually eating real food, your taste buds change. I kind of say as a smoker, when a smoker stops smoking, all of a sudden their taste buds come back. They start able to taste things. When you get rid of sugar, when you get rid of processed foods, when you get rid of all the chemicals, you actually start tasting what that food is and the flavors are amazing blueberries start tasting like candy same with grapes mm -hmm. and apples You're just like wait a minute i've never known these to be so flavorful and then what's funny is like i was out with my husband and i forget what he had he's like this is disgusting and i'm like well what's wrong with it and he's like it tastes like nothing but chemicals and yeah. i'm like yay it's like because because <laughs> i you know i have him eat healthy too yeah you start tasting that stuff and you're like wait a minute i used to eat this Right. And it's, and it's very, it's interesting when you have that shift from real food to processed food or processed food to real food and how you notice the difference in how things taste. And mm -hmm. then also how you feel when, when you start eating the food. Yeah. I talk about this all the time. I, I hear it from my clients a lot too. When they, when they shift towards eating cleaner foods, they're like, man, I can't believe I was eating that stuff before. And whenever they eat like old type of junk food or processed foods that they used to eat, like they, they say, like, I notice I feel terrible, like, because yeah. your body starts to, to crave and realize like you want these good whole foods. And, and it really is true. Like you said, like you start to enjoy those foods more. Um, and there's just something that occurs in your body when you start eating clean like that, where it almost starts rejecting those processed yeah. foods and stuff like that. So we're, we're good at making excuses. We're good at rationalizing why we feel so bad. Oh, it's because I'm so busy. Oh, it's because I didn't get any sleep. Oh, it's because the weather's changed or things are going on in my life right now. We're really good at rationalizing why we don't feel good and not realizing that, Hey, it may be because of what you're consuming. Yeah. And when you start changing that and that, con that consumption, you're like, wait a minute, 
my headache. I don't have a headache anymore. I I don't have brain fog at 2 p.m. or have that crash at 2 p.m. or my joints feel better Mm -hmm. or my stomach. The the big thing is stomach. I'm not so bloated. I don't feel so big or bloated and not realizing that it was the food in the first place that was causing all the issues. And because they were like, man, I thought it was my job. I thought it was this going on in my life. I had no idea it was caused by the food I was ingesting. Yeah. And I, I think, like you said, because you said one of the big things is processed foods. They they literally have people, engineers, making these foods as palatable as possible to get you like addicted to these foods. So yeah, it's it's enjoyable in that very short moment. Um, but if you just, just pay attention to how you feel, maybe 30 minutes to an hour later, you, you would feel so much better um, eating good, whole, nutrient-dense foods. I guarantee it. So 100%. Yeah, oh yeah yeah it's, these these companies are smart they know <laughs> mouth i mean they have they have things for mouthfeel they yeah. have things to know that you know there's a reason why you can't eat one lace potato chip they have studied that and yeah. to make sure you don't eat one lace potato chip they're they they're they're i would say they're magicians they really are they're they're manipulating you yeah. and they know what colors they know what colors are more palatable they know what what flavors that our taste buds are going to want more of and they want you to crave that stuff and yeah of course they do because it's money it's absolutely you know it's it's money yeah. <laughs> so when you start it it may take a while to break that habit or you know some of my clients come in they're cold turkey they like Mm-mm, day one we are doing this understanding the relationship to what's serving you and what's not and how your body works is huge because when you can put that and un, like you said, understand that, Hey, I feel so much better with X, Y, Z, or in my case, a lot of my, a lot of people come to me because they want to prevent or reverse disease. And it's like, okay, wait, my A1C, which is a diabetic marker is high. It's pre-diabetic. I don't want to go on medication. I told my doctor, give me six weeks. Let me see what I can do. Same with high cholesterol or high hypertension there's a motivation there. But what I would really like for people to do is don't wait till your doctor tells you that you're, I'm going to put you on medication because you didn't just get that diagnosis. Right. I hate to tell you in a 20 and 30 year olds, what you are doing, the binge drinking, the binge eating, you're like, Oh, but I'm young. I'm resilient. I call it that you are actually going to the cash store. So you think about your getting that cash advance, right? You, you have a paycheck and it's like, you don't have a paycheck. So you go to the cash advance store and you get more, you're going to have to pay that back eventually plus interest. It's yep. the same way in your twenties and thirties. You think you're resilient. Your body's a little bit more resilient, but you are borrowing from your future self. Yeah. And it's going to catch up with you at some time. And it's not just that you just got that diagnosis. That diagnosis has been building up for years. You just, your body just finally said, I'm done. Yeah. I'm done. I'm not, I'm not being resilient anymore. You you've hit, I've hit my limit. And then you start feeling bad. You go to the doctor. Why am I feeling bad? And then you get the news of cholesterol, diabetes, hypertension. You're like, wait, how's that possible? Because it's everything that has led up to it. Where if we can start now, if we can start now with being smart about exercise, being smart about our nutrition, you'll never have to worry about taking medication. I'm a pharmacist who doesn't want you on medication. And if you do get that diagnosis, because you just didn't realize, and, and I'll be honest, it's like, don't feel bad if you just got that diagnosis. Cause you're like, wait, I didn't know. You weren't ever told me to know because we're set up to fail period. We just are. I mean, look at all the stuff in the grocery store. Look at all the commercials. Look at, I mean, just watch five minutes at dinner time, and you'll see all these, you know, cheesy and greasy, and it, it, they want you to eat this way. And then Big Pharma is going so sweet, yay! We have lifetime customers. So don't feel like you're. I hate when people say, oh, "I feel like a failure." I feel like I should have known better you didn't know you don't know what you don't know that's why i love these podcasts that's why i love going going on podcasts with you especially younger people because i'm like let's let's stop this now let's 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 put you know let, let's stop this i'm gonna say, stop the insanity let's stop the insanity and let's prevent disease for sure yeah i i, I love what you said a, a little bit ago um i wanted to put a pin in this about how some people it seems like they wait until the pain is so much or they get mm-hmm. the diagnosis but like 
you know, don't let it get to that point. Like, you know, you, you don't have to wait until the, until you're in like dire health concerns uh, to make these changes. Like, you know, realize where you're at now um, and, and start making the, the changes as early as possible. Get, get the right habits in place. It only gets harder to get, get the right habits in place. The, the older you get and the, the more you kind of just live through life, you know, try to ingrain this stuff early. Um, and I, I was having, even having a conversation with someone recently and he's like, well, I'm, you know, I'm not where I want to be, but I'm like, I'm comfortable. It's like, I feel like that's maybe the the most <laughs> dangerous place to be because it's like, you're not at that point where it's so painful. Where like you hate the way you look, you hate the way you feel. So you're just comfortably moving through life, um, you know, just in that comfortable stage. But sometimes that's the most dangerous place. Um, but don't let it get to the point, like you said, where you do get that diagnosis or it is so bad that you hate the way you look and everything like that. Like if, if you're in that comfortable stage, but you don't like the way you look, you know, start getting these habits in place, start making changes. Well, it's funny because that comfortable, and I had this conversation with somebody else the other day, <laughs> but that comfortable stage where you are is a slippery slope because yeah. you start allowing other things to slip in. Oh, maybe you only have wine one week, one night a week. Okay. So then it becomes two, then mm. it becomes three. Oh, well, it was a hard, it was a hard day. I'm going to add more alcohol. And then before you know it, you're drinking every night, those things just start slipping in. And before you know it, six months, a year, six years, and you're like, wait a minute, what just happened? Yeah. What just happened? And like you said, you've got comfortable and when you get comfortable and you don't stay on top of things and I'm not, and believe me, I'm not saying to be obsessive compulsive. That's, I want people to find the balance because there's, there's a, balance that you can have and you can be balanced and comfortable and healthy but when you get to the point you're like well you know i'm i don't need to work out because i'm i'm okay with where i am or i don't need to eat healthy because i'm okay you know it's, it's not gonna hurt mm -hmm. no that's like that is a slippery slope but if you are intentional with your health and start looking at it that way and making sure that you know three days a week i am checking my macros seeing if i seeing if i'm where i should be the other four days, okay, I'm going to be doing some intuitive eating, fine. But what you have to watch that intuitive eating, does that mean chips and nachos and beer? And what I love is people say, well, I'm good Monday through Thursday, but Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Well, that's almost, you know, 50% of your week right there. And yeah. people don't, people don't realize that they're like, well, I'm good Monday through Thursday. I don't understand why Friday, Saturday, and Sunday is such a big deal. Cause that's three days out of seven. That's why <laughs> and, and that's huge. Yeah. And I find most people can't intuitively like that. Even I'm not the best at intuitive eating. Like that takes so much like experience of tracking calories yes. and macronutrients and stuff like that to know what's in certain foods and everything. So that's a really tough thing to do. Um, I don't I, eat, I do not eat enough protein when I intuitive eat. I eat way too, I, I, I either eat way too little or just not in, and, and, and usually it's, usually it's way too little and not enough protein. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I like what you said too about, you know, you love being on podcasts like this because then you're, you're around people like I, I feel like having conversations with people like you like like minded individuals it just it just rubs up on you and you, you know, you just, you just think a certain way so yeah. I, I want people listening to this to have this rub up rub off on them and everything, you know, I've, I've even had clients female clients that, that they'll say I've heard this exact phrase, it's impossible after menopause when women have oh, said this. Yeah. <laughs> so they, they say it's impossible to make progress after menopause. And I've had older clients, even males say like, once you hit a certain age, you just, it, it's all downhill. So <laughs> what Can does we address that? Can we address yeah, that? Yeah. I want to okay. say, like, well, I want to ask what does the science and research say about how much harder it is to, to, to make progress past a certain age? Like, and what does your own experience and the actual science and research say about this? So here's, here's one reason, especially for females, we have yo-yo dieted for years. Remember I said, you know, you're going to have to pay the bank eventually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you've yo-yo dieted for years, guess what we lost? We lost muscle mass every single time we did that. Guess what else we lost? Our freaking metabolism every time we did that. Mm -hmm. So now we're hitting our forties and fifties, perimenopause and menopause hits. Well, crap, we lost our metabolism. So guess what we're also, and we're not eating right. So now we're eating more sugar. Now we're eating more ultra processed foods. Our gut microbiome is whacked because of all the dieting that we've done. And there's a lot of diet products out there, shakes, packages, that's not going to help you lose weight or lose being healthy. 
So yeah, is it going to take more time? Absolutely. Muscle is expensive. Muscle takes freaking forever to add. It's not something that, oh, I lift weights and I did some bicep curls. Woohoo. I just put on muscle. It doesn't work that way. Your, your body has to have all the checks and balances. It has to have the right amount of nutrition to be able to, to be able to build, build muscle. And when you start eating food, it's a lot of food. I will say real food. When you start eating real food, it's a lot of food. And women's psyche go, oh my God, I can't eat that much. I'm going to gain weight. Okay. So ladies, if it hasn't been working, what makes you think that it's going to work now? If that calories in, calories out, not eating, starving yourself mentality hasn't been working, but you're going to go back. I know what you're going to say, but Amy, there was this diet I did in 1993 where I lost 20 pounds. Okay. That was 93 and it didn't last. And the, whatever thing you did before that was a quick fix, it didn't last. So how about now you try doing it, I would say the smart way, the way your body wants, and that's fueling your body and adding muscle. Now, let's let's figure this out. You are not going to have the body that you had when you were 16 and 21, especially if you had kids. Hormones have changed. But you can have the best freaking body in your second stage of life to keep you out of my nursing home. You can have... I'm sorry, you need butt cheeks, men and women, you need glutes. We call it, I was at a conference and it was a functional um, practitioner and he called it buttlessness. He said, <laughs> that is the most problem that we have with the older population is buttlessness. And if you think about it, when you walk, you need glutes. Yeah. When you stand up, you need glutes. When you sit down, you need glutes. When you go into your car, you are pressing the, the gas and, and the brake. You need glutes. And he's so right. I mean, you look at flat, back in my day in the 80s, flat butts was the thing. And <laughs> that's, you know, now we're, we actually say, hey, we want butt cheeks. So you want those glutes. And you, ladies, you're not going to be Arnold. I don't care how much you lift. You're not going to be Arnold. You're not. And I was watching. It's funny because if you go on Netflix, they have the American Gladiators. It's a Netflix special. And, you know, I don't want to look like one of those girls. Those girls were on steroids. Yes. So they, and they admit it. They do admit that they had some help and you're not going to look that way, especially over 50, but you're going to get the shape that you want with muscle. So embrace it with men. The big thing is low T, low testosterone. Guess what helps low T? Building muscle. Eating real food and building muscle. So if you are concerned about having that low testosterone, and I'll use my husband as an example, low T, big time, uh, started lifting and his testosterone leveled out and actually increased to where normal. And so it was eating the ultra ultra processed foods, gaining the weight around the midsection, because men, when you start gaining the weight around the midsection, you have the man boobs, you're getting estrogen dominant mm -hmm. and you need to get rid of that visceral fat, eat real food, lift, and that testosterone will actually correct itself. Yeah. So in, in later in life, it's the same thing. Eat right work out, especially lifting weights, and you're going to get those results. The problem is we're so used to Amazon Prime. We're so used to Instagram, seeing the latest fad and seeing this influencer who lost all this weight so quickly. And we expect that for ourselves that we want it in two days and four days, instead of realizing, you know what, this is not a diet. This is a journey. It has no end. It's health. Health doesn't stop. And so every day you get 1% better every day you keep working, not to the end point, but to, to gain strength, to be better. And don't worry about the end point. The end point's not coming until it's over. Okay. And hopefully that's a long, long ways away. So why not work on health? I always say chasing skinny, quit chasing skinny and start working on health. For sure. And I love the, like you touched on it a little bit, but I've heard that too, like females saying, I don't want to get big and bulky. Oh my, like you're, it, it's so hard to put on muscle. Like you said, like, you're not just going to lift some weights and like, and then look like you put on 20 pounds of muscle. Like, yeah. <laughs> but you know, but, the, but women also have to realize, okay, you have to know it's not a, I wish it was, you might put on some muscle and things get a little bit tight and understand that because it's not like, oh, I put on muscle all of a sudden I burn fat. 
it's not a, it, 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 unfortunately, it's not a, hey, I put on this much muscle, I get to take away this fat. It takes some time. But as soon as your body's like, hey, okay, they're feeding me. I can start using fat for fuel. It's like, um, it's like a furnace kicks. And then you start losing the inches. But I get that a lot with clients because they're like, wait a minute, things are getting tight. I'm like, two more weeks, two more weeks, trust me. And then all of a sudden, like, wait a minute, I just dropped five inches. I'm like, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> It's and, crazy. And, and you may be adding weight in certain areas and losing weight in the right areas too. It's it, like, yeah, you know, the scale might not even change that much, but like you said, like you might grow a butt, which we need. Right. That's supposed to be your strongest muscle group. Um, cause, cause you use it with so much that you do like to function throughout life. Like you were saying, and shout yeah, out stay, off the, stay off the scale, <laughs> stay off the scale. <laughs> Yeah, shout out! To, I wanted to say shout out to Mama Junk Earth because she's one of the the buttless ones. Um, so I think she, she comes from the generation that that you didn't want that. But yeah, um, sorry, Mom, if you listen to this, she listens to some some of the podcasts. But you need to work on it. But yeah, yeah, so I, yeah. Stay off the scale because you know I tell everybody it's like if I have a marshmallow and a peanut, they weigh exactly the same thing. Yeah. But a marshmallow is you know which would you rather be? A marshmallow is fluffy. A peanut is compact. Well, of course I want to be the, I want to be the peanut, but they weigh the same thing. So stay off the scale. If you lose weight rapidly, it's, it's muscle. It's, it's not all fat. There might be a little bit of fat there, but it's mostly muscle. And that's not a good thing. Especially if, like you said, if you're just cardioing yourself away to mm. lose weight, then, then yeah, you're probably losing yeah. percent muscle. If you're doing that, you're not doing resistance training. So, um, yeah. but I want to make sure to, to ask this question because this, this was definitely something I wanted to talk about you with, with. Ozempic, and I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna leave the the question really broad and just kind of see where you take it. So, just what is your take on Ozempic? Okay, well, if you don't know what Ozempic is, there are three medications. It's actually called semaglutide, which is the same as Wagovi. So, Ozempic and Wagovi have the same generic name, same drug. It's just different indications, different strengths. There's also one called Monjero. They are what's considered, I called a GLP-1, glucagon-like peptide 1. It is a hormone that is in your stomach, naturally occurring, okay? We always think naturally occurring is great. Not always. But it is a great medication for diabetes. Great medication for diabetes. It helps with insulin. It helps to slow digestion down. It does help with weight loss. And it helps with them getting their A1C and their blood glucose under control. Here's where I have issues. It is now being used as a designer boutique drug to lose weight. Now, don't kill the messenger on this. I understand. I'm female. There is time when I'm like, damn, it would be nice just to drop 10 pounds. I mean, I get it. I, I'm there. It's, it's. You know, it's still in my head. That 16-year-old still talks to me. And, but you have to realize that every medication has a side effect and you have to be willing to go with those side effects. The problem I have with the Ozempic and Wagovi and Mojero, especially being used just for weight loss, not because somebody has a, a diabetes indication, is that there are more than likely you are not eating enough. You are just looking at calories, maybe. And you're also not doing anything with exercise. It can't go by itself. If you're doing this medication, you must work with somebody to get your nutrition and to get your fitness. Why? Because this is what happens when you take it. It totally slows down your digestion. So you're not hungry. Okay. A lot of people like that. They don't want to be hungry. The problem is your body still requires a certain amount of nutrition to function. Your body still needs to do those chemical reactions. So what we are seeing, and I wish I had this study because my friend just sent it to me, um, that we talked about skinny fat in the beginning. That's what we're seeing. Mm. Uh, I have a friend who does um, body fat scans, and she said the same thing. What they're seeing is that people on the Wagovi and and Ozempic that they're coming in for their body scans. And yeah, they're dropping weight like crazy, but the ratio of fat to muscle is not going in the good direction. Right. So they are losing muscle at a very rapid pace, not losing a lot of fat, and they're becoming skinny fat. So why is that an issue? Well, 
it's an issue because you're slowing down the metabolism. You don't have muscle. And when we start seeing patients come in the nursing home, it's from falls. It's from things called frailty, meaning that if you see someone who's old, they look weak. They look, they, they just don't look good. And, you know, they look skin and bones. That's what we're going to see in about five years with all of this use is we're going to start seeing osteopenia, osteoporosis, thyroid disorders, uh, muscle atrophy. We are going to start seeing a lot of the issues of older people when they lose a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. That's not good. The other issue is that it causes nausea, vomiting, and it can totally shut down your GI tract which is not reversible. Mm -hmm. So you have to realize that anytime that you take a medication, even though it's FDA approved, because I'll get that it's FDA approved, even though it's been there, there's going to be a certain population who will experience side effects. You have to be willing to be one of those because not everybody is going to have this amazing, this, um, this amazing effect. The other problem is, is that it's almost like a psychological drug addiction because it's not a physical drug addiction, but I was talking to somebody else last week who said that they had a client who lost 30 pounds and wants to get off of it, but is scared to death to get off it. But she feels horrible. She's tired. She can't move, but it's that psychological addiction that this is the only thing that ever worked. And for females, especially we, we put our emotions and it's tied to our body weight, our body size, and we feel success when we're smaller. We feel failure when we get bigger and that whole yo-yo cycle, that whole, and that it can do depression. It can do anxiety. And that's what I really worry about is because we're going to start seeing that. And we're going to see a physical addiction to it because it's like, oh my gosh, but I can't get back to that person. I can't get back to being big. I'm just going to, I'm just going to deal with all the side effects because I'm skinny. Skinny doesn't equal health. Skinny does not equal happiness. And we have to start working on the happiness now. We have to start working on the mental health. We have to start working on health now and quit thinking that just dropping the pounds is going to solve everything. It And, you know, I have a friend who's mom, 71, just went to the doctor today. She has 20 pounds to lose. And doctor's like, oh, well, you know, here, I'll just prescribe you Ozempic. What the what? I mean, no conversation about, hey, what are you doing? Because she's actually doing things to get healthier, but just like here, here you go. And let's have a conversation about getting healthy, not just taking a medication. For sure. And man, someone 71 years old, if they, I see them <laughs> taking that to lose 20 pounds. I, I guarantee you if they're not exercising to, to put on muscle, like we've talked about this whole time, 10 pounds of that could be muscle, 10 pounds of that could be fat. That's, that doesn't put you in a better situation at that oh. point. So no, no, after, not at all. I mean, we're talking about, we're talking a fall, a hip fracture, especially if you're, because if you're not eating, we, you know, I told you, your body's a chemical reaction. It needs things. So it's going to need vitamin D. It's going to need magnesium. It's going to need calcium. If you're not ingesting food, where do you think it's going to get it from? Your bones. If you're not getting your amino acids, where's it going to get it from? Your muscle. So it's, it's, it's setting us up. We might be preventing some cardiovascular diseases. We might be preventing some diabetes, but what we're doing is that we're going to be seeing other disease states that we did not count on. It's like in the eighties, uh, they started saying, oh my God, or seventies, seventies, everybody started having these massive heart attacks and like, oh my God, it's because we have so much fat in our, in our food, so much saturated fat. So what do they do, they're like, okay, everybody has to go low fat or fat free. And we put sugar in everything. And what do we have now? Okay. Low fat, fat free, but it's sugar. And what did that do? Diabetes. And it's kind of the same thing when you see somebody who had, with gastric bypass, because I get a lot of gastric bypass clients because of needing to be able to fuel their body and not muscle waste. It's the same thing. So yes, these gastric bypass, they started losing weight at a rapid pace, but they also lost muscle tone because they weren't eating. And so then they've had falls and they had osteoporosis and everything else. So you can't see things as being black and white, that this is the best thing ever and doesn't have any ramifications or side effects or nothing negative to it. There, there it's, there's checks and balances always. 
and go in with, I'm not going to slight anybody who wants to take it, but please work with somebody, whether it's me, whether it's Cade, to make sure that you are doing it the most safe and effective way and preserving that muscle in your body. You're not going to be hungry, but you're going to have to give yourself nutrition in order to preserve that muscle. For sure. And we talked about it when we were just talking, me and you, and it, you just can't make one, whether it's Ozempic, whether it's trying a fad diet, like you can't make, can't have the expectation that you can make one change and solve all your issues mm -mm. because then you're taking away from the other benefits. Cause if you're thinking about it of just the weight, like, all right, this solves my solution of I'm going to lose weight. That's not the only thing it's actually going to take away from other areas. Cause then you're not getting the beneficial effects of exercise if you don't add that in you're not getting the the nutrients that you need like you've been talking about like you're basically looking at it so one-sided so binary so black and white um that you don't realize that then you're missing out on all the other benefits that you'd be getting from from doing it the the smart way or doing it the, yeah. the right way of like the all-inclusive way of like you know whether you use those impic or not like you you just can't um, look over the other benefits of doing all the other things that are going to help you get where you really want to go. So. Well, and we can do things naturally. So GLP-1 can increase naturally by eating real foods, by increasing your protein. We can, you'll hear leptin resistance, that it helps with leptin resistance. Well, leptin resistance is caused by ultra processed foods. If you start eating real food, helping your gut microbiome with fiber, you can prevent leptin resistance. So it's that trigger that makes you think that you're hungry all the time. There are things that we can do to manipulate our own hormones naturally instead of using a agent to boost them up. For sure. Well, I feel like I can talk with you on multiple subjects. I had we'll other... have to do a part two. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to do a part two sometime soon. Um, but my, my last question for you, because we do this on every single episode on the Elevate Everyday Podcast. Like, it's not just about listening. It's not just about absorbing information. It's all about, you know, hearing some practical tips and putting it into action right away. Like putting this stuff into your life, like actually taking action on this stuff. So what would you like to challenge the listeners to put into action right away after listening to this? So the easiest thing I always say, like give you three tips. So first tip is really start working on ultra, getting rid of that ultra processed food, start incorporating real food. And I always say PFC, protein, fat, and carbs. So have a protein, a fat, and a carbohydrate each meal, because we're going to balance your blood sugar. We're going to make you feel better. Not even, even if you're not tracking your macros or how much, just a protein, fat, and carbs. That's one. Number two, get some sunshine, go out for a walk every day, move that body. I would love to see you start weightlifting, but Hey, if all you're doing right now is walking, that's working all your muscles. That's great. Number three is you got to have sleep. Sleep is the most underrated thing that we, we, I, we wear that with a badge of honor. Oh, I only got three hours of sleep or I only have to function on four hours of sleep. Now that's where we recover. That's where we rebuild that's where we regenerate. You need that sleep. So put that phone down. You know, you hear about blue light all the time, really start working on sleep hygiene or sleep habits so that you are getting anywhere between seven to nine hours of sleep. You do those three things and do it on a consistent basis. You will feel amazing. For sure. And we, we talk about the same stuff. A lot of, a lot of things we're, we're talking about on this, uh, I say this type of stuff all the time. So, and we get, and it's good to see that an older female has some of the same principles and foundations uh, of fitness that, that I say, like, it's not just coming from my perspective, right? This, these are some, some basic principles and foundations that, that are good for everyone to practice. So we've learned a lot in the last 25 years. And so I think we're at a place now where we know better. And so now we just have to do better. For sure. For sure. Well, like I said, I, I feel like I could talk with you all day on some of this stuff, but <laughs> but I appreciate you coming on. Uh, where where can people find you? Where can people learn more from you? The best the best place that you can get my, all my socials like LinkedIn or Instagram is just to go to my website. You can go to amykwilson.com. So that's A M Y K W I L S O N dot com, and you can contact me or set up a phone call. Or like I said, get my socials. And if you want a free download, you can go to amykwilson.com slash podcast, and there's a free download for you. Nice. Cool. I'll have your website and everything down in the in the show notes on this one. Um, I appreciate you once again, listeners. Guys, um, like I said, it's not just about listening. 
It's about taking action right away. So, so do some of those things that Amy and I talked about, you know, put this stuff in your life right away. Uh, subscribe to the Elevate Everyday Podcast. Smash that subscribe button. I'm almost at a thousand subscribers on YouTube. So let's get there um, for, for expert guests every single week like Amy. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next video. But in the meantime, elevate every damn day. Appreciate you. Thank you, Amy. Elevate. Only obligation is to tell it straight.